In this morning's Health Watch, ask it early. You send us your health-related questions, everything from preventing the flu to boosting your energy. And as always, medical correspondent Dr. Jennifer Ashton will bring you the answers. Good morning. Good morning, Erica. So our first question comes from Joe, and we actually have it on tape. Here's Joe. Hello, my name is Joe, and I'd like to know if energy drinks are really as bad for you as they say they are. Ooh. Yeah. The energy drinks don't say they're bad, but people say they're bad. Exactly. And like so many things, Erica, they absolutely can be if taken in excessive quantities. I mean, these drinks contain not just caffeine in sometimes very, very high doses, but oftentimes a lot of sugar, a lot of other herbal stimulants. And of course, we've heard a lot in the news recently about them being mixed with alcohol mm -hmm. to get kind of a, a wide awake, drunk feeling. Um, so absolutely, they can be dangerous. And I think that people need to understand that like anything in moderation once in a while if you're taking it instead of a cup of coffee fine if you're relying on it as your primary beverage it could absolutely be a problem and the american academy of pediatrics is very clear that children and even teenagers really should avoid them yeah and you bring up that important too, point too about people mixing them with alcohol that sounds like a very dangerous very mix. bad idea our next question actually comes from our facebook page byron sent this in asking how do you know the first signs of becoming diabetic well first of all this is a, a myth actually a misconception that a lot of people have that you have to be obese or overweight to, to be diabetic, and that is not true. Obviously, that's one risk factor, as is your family history. And there are two main types of diabetes, type 1, which typically is diagnosed in younger children or teenagers where their body doesn't make enough insulin. Type 2, we see diagnosed more in, in older patients who may have an obesity or weight problem where their body is resistant to the insulin they do make, but the symptoms are very important for people to understand, and they can include extreme fatigue, unexplained weight loss, which is sometimes counterintuitive. You think, again, of the obese and the overweight, extreme hunger and thirst, and frequent urination. If you have any of these symptoms or things like a wound that doesn't heal well, mm -hmm. speak to your doctor. It's very easy to diagnose, Erica, with a simple blood test. You don't even have to be fasting anymore. And just to clarify, too, those would be the same system, symptoms for type 1 and type 2. Yeah, they okay. really do overlap. So it's a very simple blood test. It's called a hemoglobin A1C. You don't have to be fasting anymore. Then you can do do the traditional fasting blood test as well, but as many as one in three people who are diabetic may not even know they are. Wow. So this is potentially very, very serious. Very high number and a very, a very serious issue to deal with as well, so you want to nip it in the bud. Right. Uh, the last question is from Lauren as we head into cold and flu season. How can I prevent the flu happening for me? How can I prevent getting a cold when I'm riding mass transit? And what vitamins can I take to prevent sickness? You get a, you get a three in one there. Yeah, and you know, you, we talk about this all the time. Probably the best thing you can do if you're not feeling well, don't go to work, don't yes. go to school. You're just contaminating and infecting other people. But as we go into flu season, which really starts in October, goes through April, and peaks in January, the most important thing to, pre to prevent or reduce your risk of getting the flu and lessen the severity of symptoms if you do get sick is to get your annual flu shot. Mm -hmm. After that, hand hygiene, very important. Wash your hands frequently. Use those alcohol-based hand sanitizers. They can definitely Especially help. Especially if you're taking mass transit. Oh, 100%. Or you're leaving the gym, or you're shaking a lot of hands, or you're getting on elevators. Use them frequently and wash your hands often. And then avoid touching your face, nose, and mouth. We don't realize how often during the day we bring our hands to our face. That is the root of contamination when you're bringing that virus right to our face. So the less you do that, the better. All right. Great advice as always, Jen. Thanks. You bet.